Okay, so today I'll be showing off how to use Adobe Illustrator in tandem with Adobe Photoshop to change an average normal picture into a vector portrait. This is um, a way to make a picture look cool, I suppose. I'm doing it for a school project, but you can use it for whatever you want. Um, I chose to use this image because it's it's hilarious. So. Yeah, if you want to find the image, search of Donald Trump is the first thing that shows up. So as you can notice, I've already done his face, but I'll be doing his clothing here, here in this video. So the first thing you want to do is you want to put the image in Photoshop. Now while Adobe Illustrator is the first tool you use, and it's the most prominent one you use, there's a reason for why you want to have Adobe Photoshop open. If you upload the JPEG directly to the Illustrator, then you won't be able to change the image. And the reason why I want to be able to change the image is because, as you can see, there's a lot of different colors going on in the face. This is because there are light points and dark points on a person's face and on any part of their body. And if you're going to make an effective vector portrait, you need to find where those are, separate them, and then draw around them so that you have contrast between the lighter and darker points of the person's skin or clothes or hair or whatever. And the way you do that is, if I just drag this over, you'll see there is an adjustment on this image, which is a brightness contrast adjustment. So to get that, you just press this, and you'd open that. But the first thing you want to do before you do any of this is you want to go to File, and you're going to want to Save As. And what you're going to want to save it as is a Photoshop PSD.PD. And is this working with um, like Acer and stuff? So if it's an Apple Mac, just save it as whatever format is the Photoshop format for saving, which is what you're going to want to do. Once you have it saved like that, what happens is when you apply this, this filter, this adjustment, which will allow you to clearly see the light and the light dark, medium dark, dark areas, depending on the different color that is portrayed, and where you're going to want to create separations in the areas. Now, since I've done it in Photoshop, when I save this, save this, that will be what Adobe Illustrator will recognize as what is now its source image. So once you put the Photoshop image into Adobe Illustrator, later, um, if you modify the Photoshop image, then that modification will carry over into Illustrator once it's fully saved and you open Illustrator, which is how you're going to pick out the lights and darks. Now, obviously, it, uh, I had the adjustment set for his skin, for the skin on his face and his hair, so it doesn't really work here. So to turn off the adjustment, which I recommend for the first little bit, you just press that eye, and he'll be fine. Then you just go to File, press Save again. Once it's fully saved, that will be the official image of it. Adobe Illustrator will recognize as this is what the image has to look like. And then you'll press yes, change it, he's good to go. So now, how exactly are you going to set this up to start? Well, the first thing you're going to want to do is find out what are we trying to turn into a vector portrait. I said his clothes, but we're going to need to have multiple different things. So as you can see on his face, he has his skin and his hair, which are both of different colors. They're of different sort of swatches. And if you go to layers, I'll show you the layers. Okay. So on the layers, you can see there is a lot of layers. You have the base image, then you have face base, lights of skin, reds of skin, darks of skin, mouth base, and if I were to remove one of these, you see there are the light spots of his skin, which is a pretty similar color throughout. It also looks terrifying, so let's put it back to where it was. Uh, it's through the lights of skin, and it's just the face base. So that's the way that works. So you're going to have a large amount of layers by the time you're done. But the point is that you're going to have a series of layers for each section that you decide to make a different sort of color. And the way that they're going to be ordered is darkest at the top, so the darks of hair, for example, at the top then you have the different colors. Now the way that the filter works, if we go back to Photoshop real quick, is that there will normally be, be once you zoom in, which I will do, you can make out white coloring, yellow coloring, red coloring, and black coloring. 
So there are four major colors for most of these adjustments. Adjustments, which is what I found. Now, at different brightness contrast applications, it will be different, and it will be. Uh, there may be more colors. There might be less colors to distinguish. But at what I had it at, there were four distinct ones. And you want to have a different layer for each distinct color type. Okay? So, that's the start. So now we're actually going to get into constructing a vector portrait of Donald Trump's clothes. Now, when I look at this, I can make out three main color swatches. But there's four major things I want to use. Now, on the face, there was the hair and the face. Ace. Then there was the mouth and the eyes. Four major areas that you get their own sort of group of layers which have to move together. And so that's that was the face. Now on the clothes here, if I look closely, actually I don't need to look closely, but if we look, there's the black of your shirt, that would be one layer set. The white of his shirt, which would be another layer set. The red of his tie, which would be another layer set. And the microphone, which I'll go ahead and make another layer set because I feel like it, really. But you could easily say that the um, microphone layer set is the same as the um, shirt layer set. And if you're wondering why I haven't mentioned the button or the flag, it's because I'm just deciding that doesn't deserve its own layer. Uh, we're going to actually pretend that those don't exist and sort of edit them out of the photo. Because you don't need to have it be exactly as the image is. Your vector portrait can be a little bit off, edit a few things out, make it look nicer. Which is something that I'm going to be doing in that I'll be removing the button, and I'll be removing the flag in the final product. And how I will do that is I will simply put over top of it the color that is near it, so probably like the lights of the black. But before we do that, what we want to do is get our base down. Now if you noticed with my Layers down here, I have here, eye, base, face, hair, base, and face, base. If you're wondering what the bases are, they are the largest color. They are the lightest color, I mean, not largest, lightest color. Take a look here. Here, the base is the lightest color. So for the eye base, if I just drag it up so you can see the eyes, once I remove eye base, the lightest color, which is the white of his eyes, disappears. If I go to hair base, the lightest color in his hair, which I'll just make so that you can see it more effectively, he, that is removed. But the, that's not what we're outlining. We're not finding the lightest color yet, but I'm just explaining what the base will eventually be. The base will actually be an outline of the area that you're going to actually be filling in and turning into an image. So. We're going to be using the black of the coat because that will be the first thing that I use. So the first thing you're going to select is the pen tool. Now you could use the pencil tool for this, but that I like to use much more for later. Later, right now, I like using the pen tool because it's nice and precise and it works well. So we're going to use the pen tool. So here's something you're going to want to remember. Always, always, always lock layers that you aren't going to be editing. You don't want to accidentally be editing the heck out of lettuce. You don't want to, because you will quickly end up with an inaccurate image. So the moment that the layer is not going to be edited with anymore, you want to click the icon that locks it, making it impossible to alter. But we're going to be going to layer 16 now, which is the layer that we are going to, that I am going to use outline this image. So we're going to be using the pen tool. And now that we have layer 16 selected, we can start using the pen tool. Now if you don't know how to use the pen tool, it's quite a simple tool. So what you're going to do is you're going to create anchor points, which are points that the program is going to use as where it's supposed to be. I'll zoom in to make it easier. As you can see, here's the anchor point, and, when I, and you may notice I'm clicking it. I'll explain why. All right, but first, let's remove the fill from it because we don't need that, and it doesn't do much except distract me. So the way that the anchor points work is that they then create is that you can then create arms by clicking and the arm will be created, which will extend forwards and backwards. This will affect the curvature of the image. Now if you're wondering why I'm clicking an anchor point after I've already created an arm, you'll realize that the front arm is removed. 
Now, the reason I do this is if I demonstrate what happens when you don't do it, is that the arm actually automatically tries to force the line to continue in a direction. So, if you get into a point where you have to go back or directly left after clicking and causing a handle, uh, that's not a good example. Let me just quickly... Um, this is just for example, if I had to do this and then I wanted to create another anchor point up here, it will drag my line downwards with it and I will not have an accurate outlining. So that is why I'm clicking the anchor point before making another anchor point. Because if I didn't do that, the anchor point's forward facing arm would continue to yank it along, along and ruin the accuracy of the image. So we're just going to keep going with the pen tool, which is the main tool we're going to be using. And if you want, you can just create lines. This is something that's totally okay to use. So this removes the existence of these arcs, meaning that you can't utilize them if you just click like this. But, you know, it works out, out but it doesn't look quite as smooth. It's not really as good of a technique. That was more of a demonstration. So as you can see, this looks completely awful. It works good over long distances, but once you get into small areas, it looks really jarry. So I don't recommend using it in small areas, but if you're going over a large space where you're not really um, using, where there's not many curvatures, and so you don't need to do that, then go ahead, just click to create lines, and you'll be good to go. So I'll just keep on outlining him here. So you'll notice if you drag far enough, it will push the backwards facing arm further and further until it will actually drag the line upwards, which will allow you to get around corners more effectively. Another thing you can do with the pen tool is if you're holding it, it down and you press space, you can actually move the anchor point instead of only its arms. So if you accidentally misplaced the anchor point, you can go ahead and use the space bar to move it slightly and have a good solid outlining. So we'll just continue around the image. Another tool you can use is the add or remove anchor point. point. That's mostly for later on during final edits and such. So, if we take a look at it, we got an outline. That's the black of his shirt. That's good. Works well. Wonderful. So, that's all I really did off screen. So, what you're going to want to do immediately next, click outside of the outline. And if you want, you can go ahead and just, just fill it. Let's, let's fill it with uh, some white. Just to show the shape so that you can see it. So there's the, uh, that's the shirt, and now I'm going to outline this side, but since you know how I do it, you just use the pen, go around, I'm just going to quickly skip over it until I have that outlined, and then I'll continue from there, so just give me a second. Okay, so we got this part outlined now, so there we have it, the black of the black of the shirt, our outline. So now we're going to go to our good pal, Photoshop. Because right now we're just going to leave it as is. So what we're going to do first, we're going to take Adobe Illustrator. We're going to take the layer, we're going to double click its name. We're going to rename it as Overture um, Base. Overture Base. Perfect. The, over, the Overture Base. J. I'm just quickly. Perfect. Okay. So now we're going to go over to our good pal Photoshop and we're going to figure out what we need to do to brightness contrast adjustment to get this sucker working. So we're going to take our brightness adjustment. So we're going to have this, which is going to tell us what the brightness is. So if we increase the brightness, which is what I think we're going to need to do, we can turn it into blue sort of thing and burn my eyes out. But what we can do is sort of alter it. Actually, yeah, I think we're going to have to have it around here. So it looks like here we're going to have the greatest contrast of colors. We have some light blues, we have some darker blues, we have some blacks, we have some straight up whites. We have way too bright. 
But that looks like that's going to be the brightness and contrast at which we're going to be able to most clearly pick out how we're going to need to colorize his, the black, his, the, his overshirt, I suppose. So we're going to save it. We're going to wait. We're going to go over to here. So it's going to say, hey, your thing is good to go. It's okay. So then you're going to select it like so. You're going to go over here. You're going to have the fill. Oops, sorry. Got to bring that in the image. You're going to have to fill. You can select it to none. And now we can see. So now we're going to go down here. We're going to go. We're going to click new layer. And here we're going to think about the colors. The different colors. So if we're going to look here. This is the point at which you're going to be using the pencil tool a lot. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to outline the like darks of the shirt. The real dark places. And the real dark places are what are the blacks of the color of the shirt. So we're going to take our pencil tool. In case you don't know how the pencil work, you hold down the button. It begins to trace. So there we go. Made a shape. Perfect. Now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to zoom right in to get a real good view of it. Or you don't need to be like every single pixel perfectly placed. You don't need to do that. You can be. You can do that. Go ahead. You'll wind up with a pretty legitimate image, but completely unnecessary. Now you may be wondering. Wait a second. Why the heck aren't are we just making this little thing? Why aren't we caught making drawing out the whole thing at the same time? Reason being is that becomes a real pain. A complete pain. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to draw it out and trace it out piece by little, little piece. And that might take a while, but by gorsh, we can do that. So the reason, so this is mainly for convenience sake. You could go all at once, but then there's more risk for screwing up. There's more risk for having an image that looks bad. So it's not really something you want to do. Now if you have a little section in here that you don't want to really color in, you just got to trace around it like so. See how that works? Yeah, now close the shape. Yeah. Let's actually, no, this looks awful. Let's, yeah, that looks, that's better. That's better. So I recommend using the fill, not the stroke, because that expands it and you won't actually know where you fill. So you're going to want to do this. As you can see, we're just going piece by piece, and it merges. Since there's no outline, it merges together beautifully, and it works terrifically. So, if you're wondering why it's okay to be sloppy, it's because you don't need to be super accurate. Look at this. Boom. Boom. Does it look like I was sloppy? No, it won't. Because I will have filled in the shape in many ways. And it will eventually look like one big, coherent, beautiful shape. So I guess it's a good time to tell you what effect report it actually is. Now you realize with the standard image, it's pixelated. It's made of little squares that combined to form one big image. But a vector portrait, if you'll notice what I'm doing, is actually made of a bunch of spherical shapes that look much smoother. And while I won't say it's devoid of pixels, of course it has pixels, it's still on a computer screen, it can be used for many things and it is considered to be a much less pixelated thing. <laughs> So, now I've um, finished this up, so you can see um, I've uh, traced out all the blacks of the image, or at least all the ones that I think I have to trace out, and that I want to trace out. So now we're going to move on to the next color. Now, there's two, three more of the same colors. There's these whites. Dark blues and light blues. There's also some random colors like greens and pinks that are thrown randomly in there. But we're we're not we're gonna ignore their existence. So the first thing we're gonna do 
the very first thing is we are going to lock these and now we're going to create a new layer now we're going to rename this darks of over shirt this one is light darks of over shirt so now we're on a new layer we're able to edit it. We're gonna edit all these dark blue segments. And you're gonna and watch this. We're gonna take this top back. Now we can just do this. Watch. It just merges over top. Because the darker layer is on top. So, there's nowhere else for it to go. Just is It's underneath the darker layer. So I can just do this and take up huge amounts of space at once. And I don't have to be as accurate all the time. I do need to be accurate when I come to light blue segments. But just like when you were tracing out the darks, you don't need to be super duper pixel perfect accurate you so now I've gone ahead and I've outlined all of the light darks so now that I've done that I always move to lock what you finished I'm gonna move back so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a new layer I'm going to put it underneath light darks and I will name it um, uh, Dark Lights. Sure, that makes sense. Perfect sense. filled in so all these blue spots. Oh. It's an exact thing that I told you. Yeah, please give me a second I deal with that. There we go. I dealt with it. So now as the darks, the light darks and the dark lights are all outlined. Now we just have these really light areas which are the whites. But you can do this really simply. See so if you if we look down here, we already have the base of it. Now I said that it would be the lightest color but since I have it inverted, it's going to be... There go, that looks nice. Okay. So now we have his other coat outline. But now, we need to color it in. It doesn't look right. That's not what his coat looks like. So the first thing we're going to do is, if I go over to Handy Dandy Photoshop, I'm going to press this button over here. Which changes the picture to normal. Now we're going to go to... File, save. It's gonna save. I'm gonna go back over here. I'm gonna click it. I'm gonna update it. So now it's back to the original coloration. Now let's start with the over shirt. Sure. Let's start with the lightest area. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna select it all. You're going to go here. You're gonna select no outline, but there is, I mean, no fill, but there's an outline. You're gonna press I to go to eyedropper. Click it. It'll fill in. And now, we have converted this goofy, goofy pictures over shirt to vector. That looks quite nice, lock all that. So now we're gonna save, so we did it. And those are the basic techniques you'll use to turn your vector portrait into a, turn your normal picture do a vector portrait masterpiece. So remember the steps. Step one was, of course, was outline the area that you're coloring in. Step two, change the photo's um, lighting and contrast in Photoshop in order to find out where different light and dark areas are. Step three, 
using that photoshopped picture, alter the, um, select the different um, levels of brightness and darkness in the photo and create them on separate layers. And finally, you gotta take each layer and figure out what color they are and put those colors into action in order to create a vector portrait that accurately shows off each wonderful. Beautiful. Actually, looks really realistic. It looks good. I think it looks better than my face. So, um, yeah. But I said I would do all of his clothes. I guess I'll do the rest um, and then just show you the end result. Just show you what it looks like at the end because you know how to do this now. Okay, so this is the finished product of the um, Donald Trump Vector Portrait. These are his clothes and the microphone. So, uh, um, there are only two colors for the tie, a few colors for the undershirt, but you can make out the shapes. And if I turn off the layer, which is the action Donald Trump, you can see that looks pretty good. Pretty good. This might have to be removed if I decide to, um, I don't know, publish this or something, but. I could also just make the hand later. That's the Donald Trump thing. I have a few things to say um, just before I finish this off. A couple of things you can do. Um, a couple of techniques for Photoshop. Um, number one, as you can see here, it's not what I want to do. Just wait a second. Let me just quickly. Uh, so, as you can see, what we have here is if I was trying to do the hand and I didn't know because of the filter, you know, where his hand began and ended and where the background began and ended, I can quick select an area around the thing you're trying to vector portrait, take the brush tool, make it super huge, just assign it white or black. Click, move around a little bit, and you can fill that in really quickly without disturbing the rest of the image. I didn't get that little piece, but that's just something that I would do later. And yeah, that's about, that's that technique. Um, other than that, really, um, it should be easy to get all these areas found out and figured out. So, um... Yep, I'm just going to quickly try something, and then if I f find out I need to say something, then I will. Just give me a second. Okay, I figured out a problem. I am um, trying to a friend on this, and uh, he was having problems with placing the file and having it link up to Photoshop so that it would change when you change Photoshop. And I figured out why, so that this you need to do. So I have the image of Hillary Clinton in Photoshop, because why not? Seems fitting. Save it like that. Back to Adobe Illustrator. Now what you're going to first do is you're going to put File New in order to create a new artboard here. However you want to make it. Then you're going to select Place, not Open. Open doesn't do it right, but Place. Then you go to the Photoshop. Then you press Place. Then you click it down. Down. Do that. Go back to Photoshop. Apply a different thing. Go to File, Save. A back to Illustrator, it didn't say back to Illustrator, and it'll work. If you use open, it will not. So make sure to use place. But other than that, that's uh, the entire tutorial. So you should be able to build yourself a good vector portrait like I did of Trump.